Hello everyone, welcome to my The Bold and the Beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Finn promised Steffi that the remainder of the night would be all about her at the cliff house while the kids were fast asleep. It was time for Kelly to have her own line, Finn said, after Steffi showed him some of Kelly's sketches. Steffi remarked how much she enjoyed watching the kids interact. Nothing, even their house, kids, or life itself, was something she wanted to take for granted. In agreement, Finn gave her a kiss. Steffi and Finn expressed their gratitude for their shared experiences. She recalls trying to picture life without him after losing him and remembering back to that time. According to Finn, she didn't need to consider it because it had already happened. It had been a lot, Steffi said in response. In a moment of terror, she remembered reaching out to him in the dark. They kissed after he declared he was staying put. It had been the saddest period of her life, Steffi cried and said. Finn hoped she had avoided having to experience it. The time leading up to the miracle in Monaco had seemed like hours, Steffi recalled. A video flashed back to the couple's reunion in Wanaco. Steffi was persuaded by Finn to concentrate on their reunion rather than the events that occurred before it. She concurred. She vowed never to experience that again. She wouldn't, he claimed. Finn and Steffi realized how fortunate they were as a result of Liam and Hope's situation. According to Finn, for it to succeed, Hope and Liam must prioritize their relationship. Steffi wasn't sure how simple it would be now, but the distraught Liam's concerns regarding Thomas had been verified. Liam, according to Finn, needs to move past it and prioritize his family. Steffi claimed that Hope had admitted to her face that she didn't feel anything for Thomas. Steffi remarked, she really is a Logan after all. At Forrester, Ridge drew while informing Carter that he had seen a flicker of light just as he was about to pass the torch. Carter gave Ridge's drawing a quick look. Carter said it was strange when Brooke entered. Ridge's recent happiness had been unheard of in Carter's eyes. Ridge explained the sketch of Brooke wearing a designer gown and claimed Logan was to blame. Carter commented that Ridge had been in a good mood ever since getting back from Rome, while Brooke and Ridge canoodled. It was a special trip, according to Brooke, but she wishes things were different for Hope and Liam. Ridge remarked that both he and Brooke had faced difficulties and prevailed. It was fortunate that Ridge's best buddy had persuaded Carter to peer through the keyhole, according to Carter. Ridge's revelation at the keyhole monument was flashed back to. Ridge vowed to find a method to express gratitude to his friend. For a conference call, Carter departed. Although Brooke told Ridge she was happy to be the cause of his joy, she didn't believe she was the only one. Ridge retorted that Thomas make him happy as well. Ridge said that Thomas had changed, and he questioned Brooke about her belief in this. Although Brooke acknowledged that Hope started the kiss, she acknowledged that she still had reservations about Rome. Thomas, according to Brooke, was outstanding and upheld his promise to Hope to treat her professionally. Brooke thought that was nice. Thomas would love to hear it, Ridge retorted. Although Brooke had intended to speak with Thomas, the proper opportunity had not presented itself. She offered to stop by Thomas' house so they could chat while she was driving that way. A few of Thomas' designs were later shown on the conference table by Carter. Ridge claimed that he had always knew Thomas was capable. Ridge said that Thomas had succeeded in getting over his infatuation with Hope, to which Carter retorted that it hadn't been simple. Even Brooke, who was en route to speak with Thomas, could see it, according to Ridge. Carter gave a quick glance. Brooke had nothing to be concerned about from Hope and Thomas, according to Ridge, who stated that it had been a kiss. Hope woke up at Thomas' house after dozing off in his arms. He claimed that she had been gone for some time, which he considered as a compliment. Hope agreed and thought she should leave, but instead she gave Thomas another kiss. Hope wished they could stay together forever as they laid together later. She claimed the feeling was new for her. It made her feel ecstatic. She touched her forehead to his and said, Thomas, I want you. Hope later claimed that she had never anticipated engaging in such behavior while technically still married. 
Thomas warned against doing that. Hope said she wasn't embarrassed in response. She simply didn't want to harm Liam because she detested what it would mean for her family, but she had desired Thomas for so long. She insisted that it exceeded her expectations. Thomas concurred and expressed his happiness at the event despite not having anticipated it. Hope said that she had put up a lot of effort to act morally. But I couldn't stop myself, she replied, kissing him once again. Hope admitted to being defensive with her mother and really giving Brooke the cold shoulder when she and Thomas were sitting up and talking afterwards. All had been forgiven, Thomas felt certain. Hope retorted that Brooke hadn't earned it because she had been cruel to her. Brooke, according to Thomas, had already forgotten about it. As Hope hoped, she claimed that she had resisted Brooke strongly because she didn't want to acknowledge her love for him or that Brooke had been correct. Thomas made a joke, that you fell for the bad boy. Hope referred to him as the former bad boy and described him as considerate and compassionate. Thomas retorted that she made him exhibit it. She smiled while hiding her face, saying that although her world was imploding, it vanished along with him. He swept her into a kiss as she gave him a sly glance. Brooke showed up at the door as Hope and Thomas were having sexual relations upstairs. She rang the doorbell but got no response. She knocked three times before the front door finally opened. As she continued to push it, Brooke took a peek around the empty living room. Calling Thomas and stating that the door had been opened, she entered. Hope's keys and the pocketbook with her Forrester ID badge were seen by Brooke. When she noticed Hope's rings on the table, she exclaimed. Hope was in bed with Thomas when Brooke hurried up the stairs and flung open the bedroom door. Oh my God. As Hope and Thomas struggled to stand, Brooke exclaimed, Why are you doing that, Toth? So, what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.